Hey, what's going on beautiful Dolly? This is Tracy and today I'm going to be doing a video that is a card focus, which I haven't done one of these actually in kind of a while, but with the Jace unbanning, I feel like this is especially relevant, uh, Jace unbanning in Modern, because um, a lot more people are getting their hands on Jace, people are playing with him in Modern and things like that, and I figured it would be a really sweet idea to do this card focus. Um, I've done a couple of these. I'm pretty sure I have a card focus playlist. If I do, it'll be listed in the down bar below. Um, and I do it, and I, I pretty much just spend the entire video talking about one specific magic card. And I just, I'm going to be talking about Jace with a very ma modern mindset, I would say, because something I feel like I've noticed is um, a lot of people misusing Jace and people misvaluing, I would say, Jace. Um, and so I guess kind of like before we talk about the specific modes, I'll kind of talk about him as an overview and kind of what I mean by that. So I think a lot of times people like, it's like you slam Jace down and a lot of people like freak out like Jace says you win the game and I think that's a really awful mentality. So obviously he is a really good card and you do want to get him off the table, especially if your opponent is doing his zero, his brainstorm ability, because you're drawing so many cards and you're getting so much card advantage. Like when you think about this, like if you get to like turn like, I don't know, 10, like, think about how many cards that you've fetched out of your deck and that you've, um, like, drawn at that point, especially if you're in a blue deck where you're, you tend to be drawing more cards than other decks. So just the, the, the card advantage is just so incomparable with him that I think, um, and, and don't get me wrong, that is great and really detrimental, but, like, Jace is a threat. He's not the answer. Um, so I think that, a lot of people like really freak out and are like, oh my god, like have to kill him. Like, yes, absolutely. But I, I was playing a game um, of Magic Online or X Mage, but like Magic Online basically. And I was playing against like Mono Blue Control, which was super weird. And my opponent had a Jace, and I realized that I kept doing damage to the Jace, and I realized that they were at like a life total of like 10 or something like that. And I thought to myself, all that damage that I did towards Jace, I could have been doing towards my opponent and killing them because I'm on Grixis Control and Modern right now and I had so many ways of doing damage to my opponent. So if it gets to like that point, you know, but if you have like a lightning bolt in your hand, for example, I mean, hey, may not be a bad idea to, um, to kill Jace, but also just be aware of things like counter spells because you're playing against blue. So, hey, that's going to be a thing that happens. Um... And then, um, in the terms of misusing him, I'm actually going to talk about that. I guess I'll talk about it now just because I mentioned it. Um, I think a lot of people, they slam Jace down and they automatically think of his brainstorm, which is decently a viable thing. I would say, again, drawing those three cards is really incredible. And it's especially amazing with Fetchlands because just the whole idea of brainstorming, putting two cards away that you don't need, and then having a fetch land, getting the opportunity to fetch either then or on um, your opponent's turn, the end of your opponent's turn, and shuffling those cards away to draw more cards with Jace is just absolutely incredible. With that being said, um, I think that people look at Jace and always think that, and Jace has so many other amazing modes that I think don't get used, which is why I mentioned earlier about him, I think, just being... I just people, I just don't think a lot of people like know how to play with him and I, I don't know if it's the fact that like he has the additional mode, I don't know if that's what like kind of throws people off, like he's got more things and realistically there are definitely different lines of play um, with him. So um, let's kind of break it down. I did talk about Brainstorm but I'm going to go back to that, uh, that point. So the first mode um, I find just really really good and you may not look at it and think that it's not anything super special. Um, but it's, uh, you uptick and then you look at the top card of target player's library. You may put that card on the bottom of that player's library. So let me explain why this is great. Um, this to me is especially really useful in very explosive decks or decks that you don't really have answers to. Where, like, for example, if you have, like, kill spells in your hand or counter spells or, um, a hand disruption spell, like, whatever, like, the card that they could they could potentially draw a really big massive threat that you can't otherwise answer. So that's why I think his uptake is so good. 
Be very wary of it. I'm gonna say this before I forget. I'll have fetch lands. I'll be very wary if you do Jace and decide to keep that card on top because say it's a land, for example, and your opponent has no cards in hands. Be very wary of watching out for their fetch lands. Just pay really close attention to that. You don't want to make the mistake of upticking and then they're like, you're like, yeah, keep that card on top. And they're like, sweet, fetch and like fetch, you know, fetch that card away. And it, you know, shuffles back into their library. So just be really careful about that. Anyways, um, I do typically find myself casting this ability on my opponent um, because at that point, I don't really find myself typically doing it to myself because at that point, I'd much rather just zero brainstorm. However, with that being said, depending on the type of deck you're playing and if you're in a situation where like you really need Jace to stay alive, like there are situations where Jace just like helps you win harder. Like you're already in a really sweet spot and like playing him just like basically helps you. So like if someone kills him, it, it's a bummer, but like, and you know, you may start wanting to down tick for his minus one, which we will we'll get to and we'll talk about. But um, I typically find myself doing this to my opponent. But I think that Jace is really good for decks that you, like, they could just draw their combo piece and you don't have a counter spell in your hand or some other reactive spell to deal with it. So I think that's what his, where his plus tick really ultimately shines. Or you uptick and you're getting him out of a bolt range. So that's what I really like about that uptick. Um, one in, in instances that I don't as much like the uptick is instances where you're playing against decks where their draws don't really matter. So like, I just want to give the example, like I'm on Grixis Control right now and I think I have a really good affinity matchup because they play their dudes, but I have so much removal. And yes, my removal is spot removal. Like I'm not running like blue white, which by the way that, or Jeskai, like those decks have a fantastic affinity matchup as well. Um, if you guys remember like a couple years back when I did play a version of blue white and I played against two affinity decks and I crushed them both. And it had nothing to do with the fact they were good players. It was the fact that the matchup is so in my favor because if you get to four mana, like you destroy their entire field. It's amazing. Anyways, so... If I'm playing against Affinity, for example, and I've, like, cleared their board and, like, they have no cards in hand, their draw doesn't really matter. Uh, there's instances where it could, where, say, potentially they have, like, a Galvanic Blast. Um, if they top deck, like, an Ink Moth Nexus and you don't have other means of removal in your hand, that's, like, the really big key thing, is you don't have other means of, of doing it. Um, of, of getting rid of it but honestly for the most part like if affinity if we're on turn 20 and I have a Jace and I uptick like I'm not really gonna uptick them typically because like what they draw doesn't really affect me or I typically have answers already in my hand that I can kind of answer anything that they realistically play so I would just and affinity is just one example but there are plenty of decks that have like similar instances that um you know like where it doesn't matter but on the flip side you have instances where their draws do matter so say you're in an instance where you're playing against jund and if they top deck like lightning bolt's like the the way too obvious example but like i don't know if they like you don't have a kill spell and they top deck goif and goif's like a six seven like for example you know that's incredibly difficult for you to deal with and so they don't have any fetch lines so like they're not going to fetch away if you uptick it may not be a bad to start targeting them if you don't have any other, you know, things going on in your hand, you don't have any other reactive spells. So, um, really, really, really good ability. Um, I would just be really, if I'm in, if I'm in a position though, where I definitely want to uptake Jace because I know my opponent is playing things like Bolt and I want to get more value than just one Brainstorm off of Jace, I will, and they have a fetch line on board, I may just uptake on myself. It's the not the best thing ever, but it's definitely not awful, and it does get rid of a card. Like, if I don't need the card, it just filters that away so I don't have to draw that next turn, potentially. Um, but, yeah, other than that, I think his plus is very good, and I think just needs, I, again, like, I think it just needs to be used pretty much way more. Uh, his brainstorm is zero. I did talk about this a little bit before. Um... The amount of card draw you get off of this is just really uncomparable to a lot of other things that you're doing in, in modern. You know, a lot of people, when you look at a lot of cards that are in the format, um, your card advantage isn't great. Like, you're kind of one for wanting a lot of times. Like, I play Electrolyze in my, in my deck, which is really good. It, it does damage to things, and it draws me a card, but it's only one card. Um, you know, I run Ops, which I think I'm going to change out with Serum Visions actually, going back to Serum Visions. That only draws me a card, but I get to scry two, but that's not, I mean, that's like card knowledge. I don't know if I'd really call that card advantage. I don't know. 
so the the main point is you know you're not typically getting it like remand you know remand you counter something but you draw a card it's only one card cryptic command you know you're only drawing one card so it's like all of those things are only getting one this is getting you three cards every turn until they get this off the table and if you're playing a game and you're you're really favored in the sense of you're playing against a very aggressive deck such as affinity or something again the synergy with this and fetchlands i just think has made jace like really incredible just to the chance of you know pitching away cards that you realistically don't need another thing that actually came up which i thought was really interesting that i i'm glad this happened before i filmed this video because i think it's a really like little things like this that you pick up around jace is if you're in an instance where you're playing against hand disruption putting those two cards back is actually really good for you like if you're playing in a deck and it's like decently early stages of the game or like they're playing like a snapcaster deck too where they could potentially snap inquisition you or snap thoughts use you you can like take those cards and like put them on top of your deck to kind of like save yourself from um getting something thoughtsies or inquisition away and i never really thought about that until it came up actually um i was playing um against grixis death shadow and um, I was thinking about what cards to put back because I was thinking, I was like, damn, I was like, if they have a hand disruption spell, they're going to take like this one card that I really wanted. Um, but I was like, but they also have Thought Scour. So that's a little bit of a different instance. Not a lot of decks run Thought Scour. So it's not something you typically, like being milled, you're not really going to have to typically worry about something like that. But just the notion of just really thinking through that line of play. Again, that's just like a really important thing that I did notice with Jace is, you know, some people are like, oh, I put, put away cards I don't want, which absolutely, but... Um, putting away cards you do want because you do want to draw them later. Um, another thing too with this card is I think like, I don't know how Teemer does it all, but I think Teemer with J, uh, sorry, Bloodbraid Elf with Jace is actually pretty sweet synergy because you can't Bloodbraid Elf cascade into Jace, but if you have Jace on board, you can Bloodbraid Elf and manipulate the top card of your library so you know you're going to get that cascade trigger if you just cast a Bloodbraid Elf, which I think is really fantastic. So um, I don't know if anyone's out there playing Teemer, but just saying, it's a pretty sweet synergy. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I just, I mean, drawing three cards zeroes him, like, what's not to like about this? Ability's great. And really, he's such a great mid-range card, like, he's so good in the late game. When there's nothing going on and you've got, like, no cards in hand, like, he's amazing. Alright, cool. Um, his minus one. Uh, I really, honestly, I think one of his most under- underused abilities. Uh, it's incredible. Um, like I said, I was playing against that Grixis Death Shadow player, and at one point, he cast a Gromag Angler, you know, delved away his cards. He had, like, a ton of cards in his library. I'm um, sorry, in his graveyard, but um, bouncing a Gurmag or a Tassiger is really one of the best things you're ever going to be able to do. Now, what I will say about the, this ability is be really careful about what you're putting back. If you're putting away something like a Bloodbraid Elf, really bad, or like a Bedlam Reveler, don't do it. Really bad, they get the ETB trigger or like an Eternal Witness, like... Yeah, ugh, ugh, gives me shudders just thinking about that. Yeah, so just be really careful about what you are bouncing. Like, if you need to do it to stay alive, like, I understand, but, like, <laughs> try not to do that is pretty much what I'm saying. Um, yeah, another thing, too, with this is if you're in a desperate situation, you can always, like, return your Snapcaster Mage to your hand. It does say target creature to its owner's hand, so you can realistically bounce your own Snapcaster Mage if you have something really sweet in your yard. Um, I just think that ability is, like, really good um and probably not something that typically ha happens may not happen super frequently but um yeah and just temporarily doing this to stop to stall yourself until you can draw a removal spell like yeah i'm i'm a huge huge fan of the minus one and i find it very useful in a lot of things um yeah um okay and the minus 12 i mean like at that point, I think if you've upticked Jace far far enough along, your opponent's probably scooping their cards up. Uh, no, I have not ulted Jace in my school three yet. Sad face, sad day. But um, listen, you may get there. Um, where you exile all cards from target player's library, i.e. your opponent, um, and then they shuffle their hand into their, their library. So they just basically get not a lot of cards. Um, uh, yeah, you play this and you just win. Like, I don't see foresee you being in a situation where you don't win at that point. Um, unless they have, like, land bolts and then they bolt you and you're at three. But, you know. For the most part, just 
you know, getting the chance to do that again. If, if you're if you're upticking him far enough along, you're probably already winning at that point. Um, and if you're getting in close to range of, of you know, getting his ult off, your opponent's just going to scoop up their cards. There's kind of really no questions about that. So, um, and again, it's, it's, I would spend more time talking about it, but like, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's game winning. And it's like, I don't foresee that realistically happening a lot. Like, I just, I, I don't think you getting his ult off. And also too, because it's not like a typical planeswalker where you're always going for the uptake. Like he has, the, the other modes are just so incredible that like, I foresee a lot of people like really zeroing a lot. So you're not really upticking him as frequently. So Jace is staying around for longer periods of time, but like he's not getting closer to his ult, if that makes sense, but he doesn't need to. Like, you know, he's not a planeswalker where you, like if you get it, it's sweet and it's game winning. But like, if you don't, it's like, you you can still win without without the ult, which is why I think one reason why Jace is like incredible. So, um, yeah, guys, I think the um, implementation of this card in modern has been interesting to see. Um, I think a lot of people thought that this deck this card was going to affect modern way more. And to be honest, I'm trying to like analyze control and really ultimately figure out what the issue is and why a lot of people don't think it's good or why not a lot of people are playing it. Um, I think a lot of people hate, just don't like blue and I think that's one reason. Um, I think a lot of people just don't think it's as good because the counter spells are not really as good. Um, and sometimes you just can't, if you're playing against really fast decks, you kind of just lose because if you're playing like a blue white or Jeskai version, you may not be able, especially blue white, I would say particularly, you're not really able to stall out the early stages of the game because your early game is not as great. You have a lot of stuff on your top end. You really are playing for the mid game at that point. You kind of have little like chips of like counters and things in the early stages and like casting serum visions and the, you know, before you can, if you're playing as an aggressive deck, before you can drop that ser that uh, Supreme Verdict on turn four, like you're not doing a whole lot typically. Um, so I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, he's a four mana sorcery spell for blue. And it's a little weird to think about that because blue, we, we typically want to play things on our opponent's turn. But um, to be honest, I've I've really found in my build in Grixis, I find him, he works really well because I don't have that many counter spells. And to be honest, for at first glance, when you do think of blue, I feel like people do automatically assume counter spells. But like, I don't have a lot. I have I have more on my sideboard because it's just the nature of the beast and that's what I do. But um but no, like I'm running like counter flux and counter squall in my main and that's it. I'm only running two counter spells, but I have you know, I have all the other removal and things, so it's like I don't really like need that many other counter spells. So I think it works better, but I don't know how I feel about Jace in like really, really control oh, I'm sorry, really heavy counter spell decks because the thought of tapping out at any point doesn't seem like a good idea. Whereas like in my instance, like I may not want to tap out because I have a removal spell, but it's like, I don't know like how to fully like explain this. Mm, I don't know if this is like making sense, but I feel like I can get away with it a little bit more. If that makes sense. Like I, I think if I have like, if you have a counter spell and you miss the counter spell, you miss the counter spell, but you still have the counter spell in your hands. But like, if I choose to tap out on my turn, I can always on my next turn or their next turn, I can always kill their thing then. So I think if that makes sense, I think that's why he works well in Grixis um, a little bit more. I think I prefer him a little bit more there versus in like a Jeskai build or something. Um, I don't really cast Jace on turn four. It's just not really a thing that I find myself typically doing. There are instances where, I mean, I'm going to be transparent. Like, I don't have a kill spell or I'm not on a specific clock. Like, my opponent is not really presenting big threats and I don't really have a lot going on. In, in earlier turns, I've killed a lot of their things. I don't really need to worry. So I'm just like, mm, cast Jace, get some value off of him. Um, and pretty much go from there. So, um, yeah, no, I, I definitely think I would really like to see him more. I just don't really know how I feel about him in blue. And I'm actually also brewing, um, that deck as well. I'm building up, I'm brewing blue white, but I'm also going to get cards for Jeskai too, for red. So I can incorporate red if I do decide, cause I want to have the option, you know, I, I'm, I want to be stuck in a deck list, but like, I totally am game to changing things up and stuff like that. So, 
Um, I don't really fully know how he works in, I know Jeskai and Blue Wet are way more popular than Grixis Control, so I'd be interested to see how it works um, in that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much Oh, also I saw this one like scape shift list last night that was running like Jace, which I thought was really interesting. So maybe he works really well in scape shift too. I don't really know. But that is going to be it for this video. I'd really like to know what you guys have to say about Jace and if you feel like he is being used officially or if you see people make a lot of misplays when the opponent, when the person plays Jace and then when the person reacts to the person playing Jace because there's misplays definitely on both ends. So I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys in my next one.